like to talk a little bit now about the throat chakra. Uh, the throat chakra is a chakra which doesn't merely exist within the uh, Vedic system of chakras, but it also exists within the Native American chakra system. And the name is slightly different. So from the Vedic tradition, the throat chakra is usually called the communication chakra. And from the Native American perspective, it's usually called the mask or the lie chakra. And both of the names are in a way very appropriate. The impulses rise up from our lower chakra, so we start to behave in ways which are normal to them, to, uh, to us. And once the heart gets involved, we also start to develop a feeling of empathy. And ultimately, we don't just behave, we don't just do things, but we also communicate with each other. And this is where the throat chakra becomes active, both in allowing us to communicate, but also allowing us to listen. So the heart is about the energetic exchange on a more emotional level, while usually the, and also on a physical level, usually the higher forms of exchange which are more mental uh, or moral in nature or intellectual in nature happen more through the throat chakra because of its slightly higher vibration than the heart chakra. So the heart chakra is very much where we um, really make the connection and the throat chakra is more where we work with the connection which has been established by the heart. So often you will find that if the heart chakra is not functioning well then also the ch throat chakra cannot function um, normally either even though the chakra itself may look quite good and healthy um, any dysfunction uh, can be the result not merely of the throat itself but also of the heart. Because the throat chakra stores a lot of knowledge about the world around us, we find that it is also a little bit distorting reality. Whenever we are born, we are born in a different culture, in a different time, in a different place. And the throat chakra helps us to adapt. So when we're little children, we don't really know where we are. We don't know about our culture. We don't know about the place where we live. Our reality really consists of just ourselves and our parents. And slightly later, maybe also uh, some extended family or friends. But there's an unawareness of the social circumstances, of the goings-on within society. And this is where the throat chakra steps in to teach us about where are you now in this life, in what culture, in what country, um, what are the normal uh, things, which are the things which are considered good, which are the things which are considered bad in the current culture which you live in. And ideally, of course, these cultural um, yeah, standards are a representation of the standards of the people who live in that culture. Unfortunately, this is not always true. And even more unfortunately, people tend to deviate from the standard, even if it were true. So, for instance, there might be a standard of uh, not stealing and uh, it can be that most people within the society believe that stealing is bad um, but that doesn't mean that everybody holds, holds this belief equally strongly and there are many variations in this some, peeling, some people may feel stealing is always bad others feel it is okay to save your own life others feel it is okay not to save your own life but for instance the life of somebody who's dependent on you as, such as your child but there is a lot of variation here. What is right and what is wrong? And what is for you personally right and wrong? And what is for society right and wrong? And these things tend to clash a little bit. 
because for our survival we depend upon acceptance by the people around us, by the society around us. If nobody will give us a job, if nobody will talk to us, uh, then very soon we will usually die. This is true, true, two effects. One of them is just how our society works in an economical fashion. And the other one is basically true how our psychology works as a human being. Because we are herd animals, to be excluded from the herd um, gives us a lot of stress. And stress ultimately is a killer. It will deteriorate your mental health and your psychological health in such a way that eventually you cannot continue to function and eventually you will end your life or lose your life. So for our survival the throat chakra is very essential as human beings and the acceptance by society is a very strong instinct, a survival instinct but it also brings us to do certain things which are not so good or healthy because we want to be accepted we tend to tell people what they want to hear or what is expected of us we behave in ways which are expected of us instead of what are natural to us so in a way we're continually perpetrating falsehoods or we're being diplomatic or we're omitting certain facts but no matter how you turn it or twist it, it is a little bit of a distortion of our true nature. This is why within Native American tradition this is called the chakra of masks or of lies. Because we tend to present things in a slightly different way. Because we wish to manipulate our environment. And we wish to change our position in our environment. And this interdependence is leading us to behave in a very different way instead of behaving uh, basically based on our own nature on our own authority you could say we are in a way mixing our authority with the authority of the world around us and that often leads to dilemmas what is right what is wrong well I feel for instance a loyalty to a friend of mine and I want to help my friend that society might, may say, ah, oh, but he's a thief, he stole certain things, so you should report him to the police. What do you do? Do you listen to society, your throat? Or do you listen to your own behavior, which is coming from your belly? Dilemma. So the development of the throat chakra is something which doesn't always go very smoothly. Uh, depending on how well the teachers you meet in your surrounding are in tune with your own nature, um, the throat chakra will develop better or worse. So if you have, in a way, parents and teachers who are very similar to you, who have very similar beliefs, who have similar convictions, then in the way the throat chakra will mirror uh, to a large degree your own nature and you will be able to yeah, be yourself within society and if you are indeed fortunate enough to have such people around you and to be born in a society which is in a way suited for you um, then usually the throat chakra develops quite well and you will also develop in a very communicative in a social person but if you have the misfortune of being born in a time or a place which is very different from what, from what would be natural to you or you are faced with a social environment of parents or teachers who are in a way very alien in their thought processes, in their morality from you then usually the throat chakra will not develop well because there will be a resistance within you to building up this kind of framework to allowing such a structure to become your structure and then there will be always a fight between your nature and in a way the criticism of society which you internalize in your throat so instead of your parents and your teachers telling you how to behave and to be a good boy or a good girl 
you start using your own throat chakra to criticize the rest of your chakras to tell them not to feel this way, not to behave this way, um, not to have such fantasies even. Um, so it's even more strict than an external critic. It becomes an internal critic. So not merely your behavior is criticized, but even your intentions, your thoughts, your emotions are being criticized by your own throat chakra. Now it is a little bit tricky what to do in such a situation because in a way psychologically it would be the easiest for you to have a throat chakra which is in harmony with the rest of you so you have no internal conflict so you can allow yourself to be as you are you have self-acceptance um, you have not so much self-doubt self-judgment um, so this would seem to be a very positive thing but on the other hand, if the self which is natural to you is not accepted by society, you will die. So ultimately, how, what is the best option? It depends on the tolerance of those around you, on the tolerance of society. So if, for instance, um, you are homosexual by nature, in a very tolerant society, that is fine. You can show and express your um, sexual preference and there is not a problem. But in other societies, uh, you may be incarcerated, thrown in jail, you may get beaten up, uh, you may get raped for being open and honest about who you are, what you are, what you think. And the same also with political views. Many people who have views which are different from the parties in power, they also get imprisoned or persecuted or um, harassed by the government through their various agencies. Um, so honesty, in a way, living according to your nature, can also be a killer. So what is better, to fight with yourself and to repress your nature or to fight with society? It's hard to know. But what is clear is that it is a bad situation to have such a stress and such an undeveloped chakra. Because an undeveloped chakra is ultimately going to hamper you even if you do get into a good situation where you can speak freely, where you are accepted, where you are supported. Because if the chakra has never developed during the critical stages of your life, then in a way the opportunity has passed. So every chakra has a certain stage of development uh, when in a way also the associated parts of the brain are developing. And if you miss the boat, then it tends to remain a weak point for the rest of your life. But it can be helped at least uh, a little bit. So living in an environment where people are open to hear your opinions, where they are supportive to you, where they allow you to be yourself, to express yourself, at least stops the throat chakra from being more and more blocked. Ultimately, it's also very important to have a gentleness, a forgiveness towards yourself. Because society standards are just like laws, very unbending, hard, um, inflexible. They don't make exceptions all the time. A law is a law, or a rule is a rule, or even a habit, or an assumption, or a tradition is what it is. And as such, there is no forgiveness in it. We need to bring that forgiveness into this, these chakras ourselves. We cannot get forgiveness from society. There is no one person representing society telling you it is all right. We have to work on that ourselves. We have to learn to be gentle with ourselves. Uh, not weak, but gentle. And that's a very important difference. When you're weak, you know what is right and what is wrong. But 
even though you know it, you cannot do it. So there is an, inabil an inability to act. Forgiving is that you realize that you are imperfect and that you behave in an imperfect manner, in often a very erratic manner, that there is variation. Sometimes you're better at it, sometimes you're worse at it. But you realize that it is not through a lack of effort or lack of ability that you occasionally falter. There are usually circumstances like you're tired, you're stressed, you're on edge, um, which makes your behavior less than your optimum. And even though you should strive, of course, to be always on your optimum behavior, you do not make yourself less of a person for occasionally faltering. Because one yeah, moment of weakness, one um, inability to compensate for all the other factors doesn't make you weak, it makes you sensitive. A person who is always rigidly following that same order is also not evolving it's also not experiencing things deeply. They're just like a machine in their own little rhythm. Uh, and in a way they're dead inside. They're just behaving as programmed and their original personality has been completely suppressed by the assumed personality of the being the perfect son, the perfect citizen, the perfect employee, the perfect husband, the perfect wife, the perfect father. And these perfect images are not meant to be carried out. They're meant to guide us, to inspire us, so that our own behavior can, can more or less move in that direction. But the behavior should be our own behavior. We should not be reprogrammed by society, by our teachers. We should be inspired by our teachers, but not lose ourselves. Because if our own path of behavior becomes blocked, ultimately the purpose of our life is lost. If our spirit cannot do what it wants to do, if it can only obey society's rules and laws, then there's no purpose to its being alive. Because most people are already obeying these society's rules and laws. So what benefit is one more or less person doing so? None, ultimately. Some people are really drawn to tradition and some people also defend tradition and maintain tradition. This can be a role in your life. This is fine, but even if you have such a role, it should be your choice and your role, not the expectance of society, which gives you this role. A very strong example the problems of too strong a throat chakra is, for instance, warfare. So, if we follow our natural behavior, we tend not to kill, to murder, to rape, to steal or to destroy. But, if we're in the army, we're told that this is our duty, we have to serve our country. And orders are orders, you have to obey orders. And suddenly, we end up torturing, killing, raping, destroying, stealing. And usually soldiers end up having nightmares for the rest of their lives. They have depressive disorders. They become suicidal. Why? Because this behavior, which is taught to us by our instructors, by our throat chakra, by the propaganda of the media, it's not natural to us. We are not all born killers and rapists and murderers and torturers. So what is good becomes a very confused thing in us. And if we go against our natural behavior, as you can see from post, uh, yeah, post-war stress or post-traumatic stress or combat fatigue, as it is often called, it is not healthy, it is not psychologically healthy, it is not energetically healthy. 
to have such a conflict between the two. It is often because people feel very uncertain about themselves, they have low self-esteem, they have no sense of purpose, that they feel that their only usefulness is to obey society, to do what other people expect of them because they lack the inner impulse, the inner drive, the inner vision uh, and because they cannot find it within themselves, they accept it from outside of themselves. But such a process is a very risky process because you may end up losing yourself rather than finding a purpose or finding a role which is truly yours. So in general too big uh, throat chakra is a larger problem than too small a throat chakra. Too small a throat chakra usually leads to inability to be heard, inability to communicate well. So often also a person with a very undeveloped throat chakra will be very illogical in how they express themselves. They cannot argue, they can just make statements which are often considered incoherent by other people listening to them. Chakra also shows the type of dialogue you tend to engage in. So some people really uh, engage in one-on-one -on -one dialogues very well. So they're really focusing on the person they're talking to. They're creating a bridge using that throat chakra with themselves and the person with whom they're communicating. Other people tend to communicate with groups. They are not creating a very narrow ch throat chakra, but a very wide throat chakra. So they're encompassing the whole room and everybody in that room will feel that the message they're saying is meant especially for them. I'm talking to you, even though there may be thousands of people there. And these people are very strong with their communication. They can reach many people and get through to many people with their messages and in print, in a way, their throat chakras upon other people. So people who are lecturing like this, they're often in a way representing society or representing tradition and impressing that society, those moral values on the people who are listening to them. Perhaps not the greatest example, but if you look at the speeches which were given in Nazi Germany, they're very yeah, great examples of how just a few people were impressing a certain ideal, a certain morality, a certain system which was very unnatural for the people upon those people. Merely through the quality of their throat chakras and the lack of faith, the lack of confidence, the fear, the uncertainty which made the other people sensitive to such indoctrination. This is generally true for governments and leaders, that they will try to create an atmosphere of uncertainty, of fear, uh, of doubt, of lack of self-worth in the population, so that the population can be controlled by the leaders who will lecture them, who will tell them what is right, what is wrong, what is to be done, and that they should be trusted and that they are good leaders. Because if people would truly believe in themselves, think for themselves, follow their own path, such leaders would be powerless. So, more about the threat of such a weak throat chakra. So you're unable to resist the throat chakras of other people because they overpower your own. You're unable to communicate yourself, but also you're even unable to think coherently, to have a coherent um, ethical and moral structure or behavioral structure. Because there is simple no middle ground between the outside world, which is unacceptable to you or unaccepting of you, and your own inner impulses. So ultimately, a small throat chakra is often a sign of being lost, of being confused, of wandering around in the world without finding your place or your niche. Um, often it can help to travel 
to sample different cultures, to sample, you could say, different throat chakras around you, to find a place where, in a way, your throat chakra can develop, because it is, in a way, in harmony with your own nature, with your own values, with your own needs. So it can be that you're indeed born in the wrong country, in the wrong time, in the wrong culture, and that by moving to a different country or a different culture you can finally blossom. But usually also you're born there for a reason, to make you aware. Because if everything is normal to you, if you can just behave as you are, you will never think about morality, what is right and wrong, who is right and why. And this very conflict often also helps to shape your third chakra, it helps to shape and strengthen your personality by having to make these difficult decisions. And these difficult decisions, this struggle between you and the world around you, is ultimately also beneficial to your spirit which will grow from such experiences. So if you have a very easy life, where everything goes smoothly, everybody likes you, everybody accepts you, um, then from a psychological perspective this is very nice, from a social perspective this is very nice, but from a spiritual perspective it can be rather pointless or useless. So don't be too upset also about these problems which happen uh, within your throat chakra because they're happening for a reason. Everything is a lesson or a blessing, you could say, a guidance in disguise. And it's important to try to learn to benefit from the experiences, to mine what wisdom or what knowledge or what power there is, rather than to become a victim of your circumstances. Believe in your own strength and in your own ability to transform yourself, to build yourself up, to eventually meet and overcome whatever challenge is laid before you.